You guys may or may not be surprised to find out that I actually drank more alcohol trying to get a thumbnail for this video than I did in the entirety of the video that I filmed before this. But this is essentially the last video that I have to film for the rest of 2022. I have a vlog coming after this before the end of the year, but I mean, filming five to 10 minute clips as I'm going about my life throughout the next week doesn't feel like as much of something on my to-do list as filming a sit-down video does. And normally around this time of year, we would have a wish list unboxing. However, I decided that I just didn't want to open my wish list this year. I don't need anything else from you guys aside from the support that you already give me. Watching my videos, commenting on them, supporting me on Patreon is literally more than enough. And as usual, because it is this time of year, I do just want to extend my gratitude to you guys. I want to say thank you for all of your support in 2022. It honestly means the world to me. Being on YouTube is rough sometimes, especially as we know throughout 2022. If this is not the first video you're seeing from me, anxiety has been an issue this year. Your girl's been struggling and she hasn't shut up about it. So you know that it's been happening. And seeing you guys support me through that, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a vlog talking a little bit about burnout and how my mental health earlier in the year has led me to some kind of epiphanies about burnout on my channel. And the support I received on that video was incredible as well and I just want to say ahead of some amazing opportunities we have coming up in 2023 where I'm going to be going to Italy with you guys that I just want to thank you guys for all of the support that you've shown me over my five years on booktube. I'm not a sappy person but when it comes to Christmas we do always have a little bit of a heart to heart and I just wanted to let you guys know as I do every year that I am incredibly grateful for you all and I'm so happy to be part of this community. So today we have my last book haul of 2022. It is a decently sized one. It's not massive like the ones I've been posting um, because it's not covering as much of a long period of time. I think the last time I did a book haul was was it the beginning of October or the end? It was in October anyway, and that was a pretty large one. We do have 27 books to talk about today as well as four packages I think to open. I have one order from Waterstones and while I haven't opened my wish list, some of my patrons, all of my patrons are incredible. Everybody who is here watching is incredible. But some of my patrons went the extra mile and even though I did not open my wish list this year, they found a way to sneak a little gift to me. So we will be opening those as well during this video. I should, I, I should talk about this actually. This is the last video I have to film this year. So I'm celebrating a little bit. And I mean, <laughs> I've been drinking since half past 11 this morning. It's now 2 p.m. But I did eat and change my video setup in that time. So I have sobered up a little bit. I'm not too, like I'm not, I'm not drunk. But we're just, we're celebrating. So as usual, this book haul is going to be split down into sections of where I acquired all of the books from. And in today's video, we are going to have books that I bought brand new, books that were gifted to me, um, fairy loot special editions, books sent to me by the publisher and um, other subscription box books. So I think, let me just, let me drink up a bit. Everything's in stacks across the floor. We're gonna get started with the stack that is closest to me, which is the books that I bought brand new. So we're gonna kick off actually with the Waterstones order that came through this morning. I do already know what this is. This I ordered on Black Friday. It was in stock and I know Royal Mail is struggling and stuff, but it still took a while to get to me. And this is the Waterstones edition of Laura Olympus volume three, which I'm pretty much gonna read. I wanna say pretty immediately. I'm sat on the wrong side. So Laura Olympus is a bind up of a webcomic that is a retelling of various mythological like gods and goddesses throughout Greek mythology, but Hades and Persephone specifically. So the thing that I love about this is that it modernizes everything. It brings everything into the 21st century. We have technology in here. We also have a lot of releasability when it comes to the gods and goddesses, but they still retain a lot of their core personality traits. And also we don't shy away from some of the more difficult topics in Greek myth, like domestic abuse and sexual assault. This is super quick to read because it is a webcomic. And I have found that webcomics have larger panels in comparison to like, 
a typical comic, I guess. And the first time, actually I associate this comic with this time of year because I read volume one on Boxing Day. So I don't know whether to read this like right now or whether I should save this one for Boxing Day as well. Another one that I would love to get in before the end of the year, but probably won't, is It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. This one is a sequel that nobody asked for to It Ends With Us, which is one of my favorite books of all time. I think I read it about three or four years ago now. And that one is a, it's a contemporary that reads like a romance about a woman whose father dies and she heads up to the top of this building which has an amazing view to blow off steam where she meets a neurosurgeon who's just got off shift. Now they agree to have a one night stand which is out of character for her but he's called out to perform emergency surgery last minute. So they never end up hooking up and she thinks that she'll never see him again. It's just a missed opportunity up until she meets him six months later. As the book progresses she is also going through her diaries that she wrote when she was a teenager where she was growing close to a homeless boy that she knew when she was a teenager. So this is a sequel that I'm not sure I can tell you anything about without spoiling it ends with us. Big content warnings throw, I imagine both of these for domestic abuse, but it's such like, it ends with us, such a powerful story. And while I'm not expecting great things from this, while I don't think this is necessary, it tells the story of a character that I, I'm very interested in. This I feel could have been like an epilogue novella and didn't have to be a full book, but I'm not necessarily mad about it. I also pre-ordered the Waterstones edition of Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake, which is, I believe, a little bit of a romance. And the Waterstones edition has this gorgeous edge on it. I know Illumicrate and Fairy Loot have both just announced editions of this. And while I do love the Fairy Loot one, I think like this one's pretty enough that I'm not that bothered about having a duplicate copy. So this, is about two characters one of them oh they meet at an art institute one of them is a doctoral student that manages his destructive thoughts with compulsive calculations about time travel and one is a bipolar counterfeit artist so based on what i know from Ali Blake's writing from the atlas six i'm expecting this to be like an artsy pretentious kind of romance like an adult john green or like the vibe of james dean movies like rebel without a cause but obviously modernized so i'm really excited um, for this I'm kind of yeah I'm expecting it to be like a, a quirky pretentious romance that's beautifully written and that's all I really want from it. During Waterstones Black Friday sale I pre-ordered a TGA Clune book that's coming out next year but that reminded me that I had passed up an opportunity to pick up the Waterstones edition of Wolf Song, which has this gorgeous edge that I believe they are now doing with the majority of TJ Clunes releases. So I remember that they had a lot of copies in Hull. At the time that I got this a couple of weeks ago, they still did. So um, I mean, if you're close to Hull and you want a Waterstones edition, that's a place you can get them from. They also had um, a small stack in York when I was there last week. I don't actually know anything about this. I wasn't particularly interested in this book because before T.J. Clune wrote House in the Cerulean Sea, the only thing that I'd ever heard about him is that he wrote really weird stories, like paranormal stories that were also gay erotica, <laughs> which not usually my cup of tea. And then he wrote The Cerulean Sea and I was very confused about how these two books were written by the same person. So when I eventually read The House in the Cerulean Sea and fell in love with it, I decided that I would read the T.J. Klune books that are in that vein, which you can very clearly tell from the structure of the titles and also the covers. So we have Under the Whispering Door and also In the Lives of Puppets is going to be the new one released next year. But I decided that I would regret not having this just in case I like this book. So I'm gonna give it a chance. I know that it is the first book in a series called Green Creek. And I believe that this series is one that's already been published before, but has now been like re-released as a traditionally published novel. So from what I can tell from the synopsis, this is about a boy called Ox and a family of shapeshifters moving next door. And he becomes, I'm assuming he ends up in a relationship with the youngest boy. But then the last paragraph of the synopsis kind of implies that possibly the guy is murdered. So yeah, I'm not gonna to expect too much from this, just because I, I really don't know what to expect, but I hope that I really like it because the House in the Cerulean Sea is actually going to be on my best books of the year list. I also picked up Sarg Volume 10. I have read this one. It was not quite as soul destroying as Volume 9, but it wasn't like Sunshine and Rainbows. This is the 10th installment in my favorite comic series ever, which is also just generally one of my favorite series ever. And we are following a family that are being hunted down by bounty hunters because of 
just existing essentially. So it's like Romeo and Juliet set in space. We're following a man and a woman from a warring moon and planet and they fall in love even though they shouldn't and oh well according to the governments and propaganda they shouldn't and they have a baby. So from that moment on they are on the run as these bounty hunters from their respective governments come and hunt them down to try to kill them. This series, I have read this and I did post a spoilery video on the entire series that's like chaptered so if you're not all the way through the series, you can stop without being spoiled. I just don't think this series is ever going to be the same ever again after volume nine. So I didn't love this one, but I'm excited to see where the story goes. I'm hoping it can recapture or like reignite some of the feelings that I had when I was reading the first nine volumes of this. I've also picked up some manga in the last couple of months. The first one I think I got when Kara from Kara's Bookshelf was visiting the UK and we met up in York. And that is I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino. This has a very complicated like series structure but I do believe that this is the first volume and all I know about this is that it is a contemporary story and one of the characters has a hearing disability. Strangely considering I read so much fantasy I only really read contemporary like manga and comics. Saga isn't contemporary it's sci-fi but all of the issues that they deal with are like very human issues as opposed to fantastical issues so I've heard that this one is a hard-hitting one and that is that's what I love in manga and contemporary so I'm excited to get into this one. And the other one I picked up recently because I thought that it was out of print and then I found it in my local comic book store, which is I Had That Same Dream Again by Yoru Semino. I picked this one up because it is by the same author of I Want to Eat Your Pancreas, which once again is a hard hitting contemporary manga story. And this one, I it's very vague so I don't really know what it's about. It says a high schooler who hurts herself, a young woman spurned by society and an old woman spending her twilight years in quiet solitude. While Nanoka, a grade schooler with few friends, gets to know these three very different people, she seeks to understand what they all have in common and just what it means to be happy. So it is about finding happiness. That's all I really know about it because I did pick it up based on the fact that it is by the same person who wrote one of my favourite manga. And then the final one that I bought new was the second book in the Lycanius trilogy which is An Echo of Things to Come by James Islington. I was actually really mad when I bought this because I went to Waterstones paid full price for it and then the day after I found out that Orbit were doing a 50% off paperback sale. So I could have got this one and the third book for the price that I paid for this one. It doesn't matter like I have it now it's fine. <laughs> this one is the second book in an adult epic fantasy series that is following a guy called Ki no it's not Kieran. This one isn't Kieran. Davin? It begins with D. Davian. Oh Oh, there's a recap at the beginning that's amazing. So it's about this guy called Davian who is one of the gifted and a few I think it was 20 years in the past there was a war between the orgers and the regular people and the orgers like have like super abilities I guess and they were essentially overthrown all of the orgers were killed off but the gifted were allowed to live under a strict set of rules so Davian is approaching the age where he has to perform the series of trials but his gifted power hasn't evolved yet so he's really concerned about it when this elder comes to the keep or like the mages school and tells Davian that he knows that he's actually an orger he gives him a magical artifact and he tells him that he has to go north to repair a barrier that is about to fall and only orgers can fix it but if the barrier does fall all of these monsters are going to pour through into the world and kill everyone. I really really enjoyed the first book in this series and there is a character in here, a morally grey character, that I especially want to find out what happens next. Something that I really liked about this is that it always kept you guessing because all of the adult characters outside of the main cast which are I'd say they're around like 18 to 20. Everybody older than them is working towards their own agenda so you don't know who to trust and then your main cast of characters that you feel you can trust are actually just very young and inexperienced so they're just gonna make mistakes because they don't have a clue what's going on. So yeah, the first one was a good time and considering the um, length of these, they're pretty fast paced and they're not dense at all. So hopefully I can get to an echo of things to come sometime soon because with the level of complexity in this series, it isn't advised that you leave like massive gaps between reading each installment in the series. How have I spent 19 minutes talking about one stack of books in this video? We'll do the gifted ones next. I'm really excited. 
um, to open the Amazon parcels. So before we start tearing open parcels, I do have two other books that have been gifted to me recently. One is from Gavin and that is the Heartstopper yearbook. He got an additional copy and he obviously didn't need two, so he gave one to me. This one is a companion to the Heartstopper comic series, which is another contemporary graphic novel, which I haven't read this yet. I don't even know if it's something that you do read. It really is just a companion to the series. I feel like it's something that's like nice to flick through, but not necessarily something that I have to read. I was torn whether I actually wanted to buy this. So I mean, thank you to Gavin for just giving me your duplicates that I didn't need to make that decision. And then the second one was A Gift from Curtis, which is Fire and Blood by George R. R. Martin, which as we all know, is a spin-off from the Game of Thrones series. I have enjoyed the TV show quite a bit. And after doing Got Along, which was Catch Up Book Club's first project, like in 2018, I always intended to read Fire and Blood but this is like a history of the Targaryen family and I've heard that it reads like a textbook. Like George R. R. Martin's writing to me is not super compelling. I love his complexity of plot. I love how all of the characters are morally grey but his writing it's not ridiculously compelling to me. So the thought of reading like essentially a textbook written by him was not really the most appealing thing I could think of. But since watching the TV show, it has kind of reignited my interest in it because the TV show obviously shows that this story does have compelling elements in it. It's just, I don't know. I'm excited because this kind of thing is something that I would love to read, like a history book based on the plot of another book series, you know, like fleshing out the world and making the world seem really real. I just don't, I don't know how long it's going to take me to get through this. And now for the couple of extra bits that I've got. The first thing is not a book. And I think that this is actually from Hannah, who is the wonderful Lida M here on YouTube. Hannah said she'd gotten me a little something from Etsy. Oh, this is so cute. This just says Merry Christmas from Hannah. Thank you so much. I feel like it's some sort of art. Hannah. That is gorgeous. Oh my God. Is this like legitimately drawn or is this a print? It looks like it's legitimately drawn, but it also could be a print. But it is Sunnydale High School, which is obviously the high school that everyone attends in my favorite show, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Thank you so much, Hannah. I love it so much. And then moving on to the two Amazon parcels. These feel exactly the same to me. They felt like they were the same size, the same thickness. So I did get Curtis to open them both just to make sure they weren't duplicates because like I said my wish list isn't open so people were just sending me things that they thought I might like I guess. So let's get the gift note out. This one's from Harry. It says Merry Christmas. I heard this was similar to SJM and JLA and thought you might enjoy. Now I'm really intrigued. This is so because obviously like when it's a wish list unboxing I have an idea of what it's probably going to be. I have no idea. I don't have my glasses on either so I can't see in the viewfinder. Oh, oh, Harry, you didn't. I'm desperate to read this. I've heard so many things about Carissa Broadbent since um, Raven Kennedy recommended me the Daughter of No World series. And I think that this is the new one, which is about vampires, but it's called The Serpent of the... The Serpent and the Wings of Night. And it's the first book in Crowns of Nyaxia. I love, this is a gorgeous edition as well. I'm really upset about all of the indie series that are being picked up by publishers just because I prefer an indie paperback so much more to like a traditionally published one. Oh, thank you so much, Harry. I'm gonna read the synopsis of this because I have no idea what it's actually about, but it says human or vampire, the rules of survival are the same. Never trust, never yield, and always, always guard your heart. The adopted human daughter of the nightborn vampire king, Araya, carved her place in a world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the Kajari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. But winning won't be easy against the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Araya is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival. Everything about Rain is dangerous. He is a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy to her father's crown, and her greatest competition. Yet what terrifies Araya most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. But there's no room for compassion in the Kajari. War for the throne of 
compulsive night brews, shattering everything that Araya thought she knew about her home. And Rain may understand her more than anyone. Their blossoming attraction could be her downfall in a kingdom where nothing is more deadly than love. I'm hyped. Thank you so much, Harry. And then this one is a hardback. Do we have a note with this one? I think this one's Lamia. It is Lamia. It says, Merry Christmas, my dear. Even though you didn't open your wish list this year, I wanted to get you this book. It's not the fairy loot edition, but the contents are as magical. Is this an irregular secret society of witches? That's not what it's called. Lots of love from your resident vampire. Oh my God. It is. This is actually on my wish list as well. Thank you so much. So this is the very secret society of irregular witches, not the irregular secret witches. <laughs> Bye, Sangu Mandana. This is like a cozy story, I feel. Very similar to like House in the Cerulean Sea, like that kind of vibe, which is why I wanted it. And I dithered when the fairy loot edition, like I was going to buy it. And then I decided I didn't need it because I didn't have this book, didn't know if I was going to love it. It was just being a little bit extra. So I decided against it. So thank you so much, Lamia. Oh my God. And this is what I'm probably going to be reading for our Patreon readathon this month because it starts the day after this video goes live i think it's the 28th and the 29th and the prompt is to read your most recent purchase or like the most recent books you've acquired which is a super nice prompt to have after christmas and at the minute this is this is the most recent one and i don't think i have many if any books come in actually on christmas so this is like i said just like a cozy fantasy story and the back says which wanted living tutor wanted for three young witches must have nerves of steel previous teaching experience not necessary witchiness essential so yeah I feel like this is just gonna be all vibes and wild cutesy cozy stories you wouldn't think were my thing I feel like these are my guilty pleasure like heartwarming reads similar to the contemporary manga I read it's like the, the few things I love outside of my super bloody dark gut-wrenching fantasy that I typically read the one book that I've received from the publishers over the last couple of months is from Walker Books and that is Gleanings by Neil Shusterman. This is a collection of short stories set in the Scythe world, which I'm super excited to read because one thing that I wanted more of from the Scythe series is more of the world because I didn't really care too much about the characters. There was like a romance going on that was completely unnecessary, but what I loved was the world and how interesting it was. So I'm super excited to get into this, which is a perfect segue into the Fairy Loot special editions I've received recently because I did of course get the Fairy Loot Arc of a Scythe set which I actually should have hauled for you guys last time and completely forgot about but we have of course Scythe, Thunderhead and the Toll and they all have like scythes on the end pages not the end pages the sprayed edges and there is also a side from I'm not going to show you all of them but there's foiling under the dust jackets which is super pretty and also reverse dust jacket art as well so you can flip them inside out if you would like to and if you guys are unfamiliar with the side series it's one of my favorite series of all time actually it is a young adult utopian series where nobody dies of anything so there's no illness no accidental death no murder the only way that you can die is if a scythe gleans you and that is because there is still a population issue so each scythe kind of decides how they want to kill and what their method is going to be when selecting people to kill but they're not allowed to have any biases now obviously this system does still have room for corruption and that is what our two main characters are fighting against as they enter into the scythe term as apprentices and take two very different paths in their training. The other Fairy Loot Special Editions I've received recently are The Way of Kings by Brenda Sanderson. So this is part one and part two. The Fairy Loot Editions just have a gill edge, but I was going to buy these anyway, so I thought I may as well just get the Fairy Loot Editions instead of the regular ones. And this is the first book in the Stormlight Archive, which is the most impossible series to describe because the actual series has nothing to do with the plot of the first book. But <laughs> you are essentially following, it's a, it's a multi cast of characters but they all have something to do with a war between the Parshendi which is a different race and Alethkar which is a kingdom like a human kingdom and so the characters might be somebody who is a slave in the army or a soldier or general in the army or somebody who is the apprentice to the sister of the general of the army or is it the niece I think it's the apprentice to the niece of the general of the army but it's all to do um with this this war and the actual series it has more to do with legendary knights 
it has more to do with the Cosmere as a whole and all other interesting, magical, mysterious, intricate things like that. But it's one of my favourite series ever. And I do have the Mistborn editions, like the Glanx mini like collectors Miss Bond editions. So I was obviously gonna pick up the Stormlight ones as well. For Fairy Loot's regular subscription box books, I'm gonna move through these a little bit faster because I know like less about them. But a bonus paperback in either the October or November box was Princess of Souls by Alexandra Cristo. And this one is about a character who like harvests the soul of the dead and a soldier in the army who's looking for revenge on the king. We have One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig, which I've actually heard amazing things about. So I'm super excited to get into this one now. And this is about a girl who has I think it's some sort of dark spirit or like a nightmare trapped in her head and she is trying to save a town from like the dark magic that curses it. We also have The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mix. This one is about a coven of witches and one of them is becomes the bride in a treaty to what king is it? She's the treaty bride to the human kingdom of Isidal and her coven tasks her with like going undercover with the guise of marrying the king so that she can kill the prince. For the adult fairy loot we have the November one was A Diary of Blood by S.C. E. Gibson. This one is about the Brides of Dracula who I think are working against Dracula like when they first marry him they think he's great they find out what a terrible guy he actually is and this one is about one particular bride I think that is trying to usurp him or like overthrow him or something. It's also a female female relationship. The October one was Poster Girl by Veronica Roth. This one is an adult dystopian about a girl who was the face of a rebellion. So it's a dystopian society. There's already been a rebellion that fell. This girl was the poster girl for it and she's been imprisoned for like 10 years. The Afterlight box, which was a Lumicrate's romance subscription, had a Christmas romance in it, which was Make You Mine This Christmas. This one is a female female romance, which sounds like another book that I have in this stack. But this is about a girl who ends up kissing a friend under the mistletoe to make his ex-girlfriend jealous and they end up fake dating but then she ends up actually really into his sister. The October Illumicrate book was The Whisper and Dark by Kelly Andrew. I'm not sure if this is officially Dark Academia but it takes place in a university and it's two students who are trying to like solve a mystery and it says they soon find themselves up against something old and nameless an enemy that threatens to tear them and their forbidden partnership apart. The Illuminaries by Susan Deadard is one that I'm very scared of because I don't like the truth witch and this one has a synopsis that actually reminds me a little bit of the Devouring Grey. It's about a girl who wants to join the Illuminaries who are like the guardians of her town that protect the town from all of like the monsters that live in the forest. The one that sounds like make you mind this Christmas is Kiss Her Wants to Me by Alison Cochrane. This one is about a woman who falls in love with this mysterious woman on Christmas Eve and then they end up never seeing each other again up until the main character agrees to a marriage of convenience with the guy who runs the coffee shop that she works in because I feel like she's struggling financially and he wants to access his inheritance and then she finds out that the girl that she fell in love with that Christmas Eve is actually his sister. All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham is a thriller that sounds really interesting to me because it has one of my favourite thriller elements which is a true crime podcast. So this is about a woman whose baby goes missing. He's like kidnapped from his crib and she's invited onto this true crime podcast. Um, she's been suffering with insomnia since her baby was taken. And as the podcast host is asking her more and more like invasive questions, she finds herself like a mix of the insomnia and like the intense interrogation is making her question like what she actually knows about the day that her baby went missing. And then finally, we just have the Goldsboro books for October and November. The October one was Silver and Nightfall by Rin Chapeco, which is a, this is a vampire one, isn't it? Yeah, so this is about a vampire hunter who is looking at, I think it's a new breed, yeah, a terrifying new breed of vampire sighted outside of the city. And he meets a shockingly warm-hearted vampire heiress and her fiance. And he ends up involved with those two in his quest to like hunt down this new breed of vampire. I've read The Bone Witch by Rin Chapeco and I really enjoyed that. So I'm looking forward to this one. And I think this is the October one. So I should be hopefully reading this in January. And the other one I should be reading in January, fingers crossed, is The Immortality Thief by Taryn Hunt. This one is a sci-fi that I've heard good things about. And I saw, I was looking up 
the original edition to like see the extent of the customization on this because there is a gorgeous edge but also as well as the gorgeous edge oh my eyes not as pretty this has foiling under the dust jacket but i know there is one that has like a full printed hardcover so sad i thought it was the full printed hardcover because the way i don't know like the intricacy of this foiling hasn't printed very well and this one is about a ship that has been lost for a millennium and there is a guy who is i think he has an option of being sentenced to like life in prison or going out to this ship and spending his life like mining the data off it and i'm assuming that the like data on the ship is actually something quite juicy i've heard good things about this so i'm excited so those are all of my books my final books for 2022 although i actually i know that they're not because my goldsboro for december was delivered last week and i just got my aluma crate today and i know that ashley said that she's gotten me a book for Christmas. And then I obviously have the YA and adult fairy loop to come. So there's gonna be five more, but like they can wait. We'll we'll deal with those in like March or something, or in the case of the subscription boxes in my next unboxing, which I actually don't really have time in my schedule for that, but we'll squeeze it in somewhere. <laughs> But I do hope you have enjoyed this book haul. I hope you guys have all had a wonderful Christmas as well. As it is the Christmas season book haul, the festive book haul, the very merry book haul is what we're saying it because I'm feeling, you know what? I'm actually a lot more sober than I wanted to be right now. But that's not a bad thing actually because I do need to start editing when I finish filming this video. But as it's the Christmas season book haul, please let me know down in the comments what your favorite book you've received or bought yourself recently is. Cause I know not everybody gets books for Christmas and I'm not really getting books for Christmas this year. So a book that you bought yourself, maybe a Christmas gift to yourself. Let me know what your favorite book that you are the book that you've received most recently or bought most recently that you're most excited to read. Let me know what that is. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. Thank you so much for your support throughout 2022. I will be seeing you before the end of a year in a vlog, but this is my last sit down video. So thank you for all of your support. I have some exciting things planned for, it'll be subtle, but I'm excited about 2023. So yeah, thank you for another year of support. And here's to another one. But that's it from me today, guys. So please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head into my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're a go And nobody knows With guns in under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no